Hello and welcome to another edition of Middle Earth Friday for Friday, June 2nd, 2017. This is episode 21 and it's called Austin City Limits, a chat with Stephen W. Thomas. In addition to this interview with Stephen, we're also going to take a look at Sandro's recent white paper about the BizTalk Feature Pack 1 and the ability to publish your BizTalk 2016 operational data to Power BI. So let's jump into the interview. Hello and welcome to another edition of Middle Earth Friday. Uh, today I have a special guest, uh, Stephen Thomas. We're in beautiful Austin, Texas, uh, visiting. So for the two people that don't know who you are, can you uh, give us a brief introduction? Yeah, thank you. My name is Stephen Thomas and I've been working with uh, BizTalk server since uh, 2001 and uh, since then I've you know branched out into other Microsoft integration spaces uh, including you know like Windows Workflow and uh, Logic Apps and uh, spent a little bit of time working on infrastructure as a service in Azure as well so um, most of my focus really is on the integration space though and I love to uh, do BizTalk and do Logic Apps. Um, also run the community site biztalkgurus.com so if you need help on this talk, that's a good resource to turn to. And I'm a 13-year uh, integration slash BizTalk MVP. So I remember when I was learning BizTalk back in like 2004, 2005, I relied on biztalkgurus.com a lot. So um, I certainly appreciated that resource, um, you know, early on in my career and continue to uh, follow it. So that's, that's great. I also remember meeting Stephen Thomas for the first time at MVP Summit. Um, you were nice to me, so that was oh, cool. good. Yeah. Yeah, not always nice. <laughs> people, so. And also, I remember some of the other people being so intimidated in that room. So guys like John Flanders were there, mm, yes. Jesus Rodriguez, Scott Kolstak, some of these sort of legends of, of biz talk. So uh, I was trying to think about that the other day, and it was kind of a nice trip down down memory lane. So you mentioned that you've done a lot of consulting mm -hmm. in this integration space. So I guess, what are some of the experiences you've had, both good and bad? And I guess, what are some of the, I don't know, the patterns or anti-patterns or, or bad behaviors that you've seen in across some of your, your travels? Yeah, so I've, uh, I've been about 25 different uh, client sites and the implementations of BizTalk kind of range anywhere from, you know, single standard edition uh, running, you know, light workload to uh, larger clients that have multiple BizTalk server groups, uh, all enterprise edition. You know, that are core mission critical apps. Um, I find that the clients that have the most problems generally are the ones that developers have full production access. So that tends to be something that is, uh, doesn't tend to work well long term. Um, you end up with situations, you know, obviously, where the developers muck with things and they should end make changes and nobody knows. Um, so that's definitely uh, out there. I think, I think by now most organ organizations are sophisticated enough uh, to know not to do that. Uh, but this was a, a major large player that uh, was very shocked when you walk in and you see that kind of mm. thing going on. Um, so what's some, maybe some positive things or interesting things that you've seen at some of your, your client sites? Yeah, so I walked into a small client uh, just the other day and had very low expectations. They're running a BizTalk 2010 environment and they have a full-blown uh, clustered MSDTC, clustered SSO. Um, from an infrastructure perspective, doing everything exactly the way they should be on the BizTalk side. Um, and it's really impressive to see you know, such a small client without a lot of resources to turn to to, to be that sophisticated with BizTalk. Mm, cool. So I know you've been doing more and more logic apps these days. I guess how would you categorize the kind of the, the, BizTalk, the BizTalk work that you've done in the past versus the logic apps work that you've been doing recently? Are the applications doing some of the same things or are they kind of taking on sort of a different persona? So the clients that I've done Logic Apps for so far um, just so happen don't have BizTalk running okay. um, on site today. So, but when you look at the problems they have, they're actually problems that could have been solved with BizTalk server. So one of my clients was an EDI, they needed an EDI solution. Um, that's the way they get paid for, for the work that they do is they have to send the EDI transaction. Uh, very small client in terms of IT. Um, and don't have the expertise to do the EDI transactions. Uh, BizTalk server obviously would have worked for it, but from an infrastructure perspective, it would have you know, been a massive overhaul to roll out BizTalk server, and it would have been you know, definitely overkill for this client in, in this situation, because they, they don't need all the power that BizTalk server can bring. 
Uh, plus, they don't have the skills and resources to set it up um, on the infrastructure side. Uh, so we looked at Logic Apps and using the integration accounts, and it was a fantastic solution. So they weren't familiar with BizTalk at all. So introducing Logic Apps, there was no like learning curve difference between BizTalk and Logic Apps. Uh, so we jumped right in and built that solution in a fraction of the amount of time. We probably delivered the whole solution in the amount of time that could have installed BizTalk Server. So that's one of the things that I find interesting about Logic Apps is this idea of a low barrier of entry. And I think the scenario you described is, is a great one because what it allows people to do is actually focus on the value mm -hmm. um, instead of focus on a lot of plumbing and infrastructure that needs to be deployed before you even start working on trying to solve the business problem. And that's what gets me pretty excited about Logic Apps, especially in greenfield scenarios where you actually don't have to spend a lot of money to be productive. So your clients have seen tremendous amount of value by being able to focus on solving the business problem first without a lot of um, you know, sort of friction or plumbing. And I think that's what's compelling in the Microsoft camp versus a lot of their competitors where they need you to make an upfront large capital investment in order for you to get started. And I think that's um, a great opportunity for Greenfield customers looking for integration and having some good tools at their um, disposal. Yeah, and we were actually in a very unique uh, situation here. I'd actually rolled off the project and turned it over to their IT department. And their client that they were sending the EDI files to totally switch their back-end system up. And unlike most clients that would kind of notify you of this, they didn't, and they said it's supposed to be seamless. Well, it took us uh, about 15 days to get another transaction through after their seamless uh, transition to a new back-end system. But with Logic Apps, we were very quickly able to make changes to our schemas for other transactions and, and process them internally very quickly. Um, if we were rolled out a full BizHawk you know, deployment, we would have had to uh, spend a lot more time in, in doing the deployment, but through the Azure portal and scripting things with PowerShell, um, a lot of those tasks were much quicker now. Okay. Now, as you've started to do more of these serverless type architectures, I guess, what would be some of the trade-offs of going down this path as opposed to more of your traditional on-premise infrastructure? Yeah, well, I found whenever I do a BizTalk solution, I'm very cautious about persistence points. You know, you build your orchestration as lean as you can, and I feel that we write, uh, you know, good, clean orchestrations. Um, I find kind of in the serverless space, so that's definitely building a logic app, um, if there's not a, a tight SLA, I'm much less concerned about the quality of the code that I'm writing. I mean, I'm not going to make it, you know, too too messy, but I would kind of call it semi-sloppy in, in what I would do. I'm definitely not thinking uh, performance first, um, especially in, in my client scenario where we didn't have any SLA, we just needed to get the file there sometime today. Right. So we were less concerned with how, how fast everything performed. Right. So you're going to be in London at Integrate mm -hmm. next month in June. So what are you going to be talking about there? Yeah, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about my experiences taking my first uh, client with their Logic Apps into production and how we looked at optimizing uh, uh, deployments and how we uh, looked at the problems that we saw and how we overcame them and hopefully help, uh, help people solve those problems before they run into them as well. Great. All right. Now, you are an independent consultant. How can people reach out to you if they want some help with their integration project? Yeah, so I've launched a new website, uh, kind of doing a rebranding. So you can just go to Stephen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, wthomas.com, and you can just click Contact Me. Okay, well, we'll link that up right here. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, but thanks a lot, Stephen, for your hospitality. We've had a great time here in Austin, and uh, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for visiting. Thanks. Okay. Next up is Community Corner, and this is, once again, provided by Sandro. Uh, he's been in this spotlight several times, so certainly appreciate all the efforts that he's making inside of the Microsoft integration community. Now, as you may recall from the feature pack or what I call the fabulous pack episode, uh, we did go through a, a demo where we had Power BI surfacing our BizTalk operational data. And this is something that Sandro goes ahead and walks through in detail and he decided to create a free white paper uh, brought to you by BizTalk360 where you can actually get all of the details that you want about this particular scenario. So here is a good synopsis or summary of everything that's covered inside of the white paper. So how to install Power BI Desktop. Uh, the second step is how do you enable the operational data feed from BizTalk2016. Next up, you can use the Power BI template that's included in BizTalk Server 2016 in order to publish 
that Power BI template into your Power BI tenant. And lastly, you're able to connect, this is probably the most important step, is you can connect your Power BI instance to your BizTalk server data feed using the on-premise data gateway. So this allows you to have a regular scheduled refresh of data being published into Power BI. So this is great, for example, if you wanted to view this telemetry on your mobile phone, you certainly would want that updated in some sort of regular cadence. And really the most efficient way of doing that is to go ahead and use the on-premise data gateway. So for those of you that may not be overly familiar with Power BI, it is a great tool. And Sandro's actually put some great work together here where you, he'll accelerate the time it takes for you to actually get this up and running. So thanks Sandra for, for pointing this out. So once again, I wanna thank Stephen W. Thomas for uh, having me and my family down in Austin. We had a great time. Um, I've also included some bonus footage. So if you wanna see some of the sites of Austin, uh, stay tuned for the, the rest of this episode. Don't forget to visit the Integrate website on biztalk360.com where you will see Stephen W. Thomas, Sandro, myself, and other people's abstracts about what they're gonna be talking about. Here's an updated snapshot of the survey results. So if you haven't filled out the survey, please go ahead and do so. Um, as you can see, we've got you know, Logic Apps, BizTalk, and Service Bus in the lead. Surprisingly, blockchain, there's a fair amount of interest there. So um, it is something that I'm spending a lot of time these days on. I really enjoy it, I think it's interesting. I uh, still wanna get uh, you know more expertise under my belt before I actually publish anything on it, but you can certainly see a future episode including blockchain. But go ahead and provide your feedback via the survey. Also, don't forget to follow Middleware Friday on Twitter as well. Thanks again, BizTalk360, for being a great partner of the show. I'll leave you with a couple music credits, and then we'll see some of the Austin footage. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.